When you look at the price of a decent bike today and the size of your insurance premium, you'll not be surprised to learn that motorcycles are twice as likely to be stolen as cars. Scooters are most at risk today, but no one can afford to be complacent. Organized groups can and do target any make or model of bike. Skilled thieves can crack OEM locks in less than a minute, so don't assume your superbike is secure. Gangs in vans will steal to order to get parts that might reappear on the racetrack. Or for ringers to switch the vehicle identification number, or VIN, of a wreck bike to your bike. For advice on security, listen to these experts. As advanced motorcyclist trainers, they're passionate about bikes. And as motorcycle police, passionate about protecting your pride and joy. It comes down to two questions. The first is what you can do. Look for somewhere where there's lots of people, there's lots of pedestrian thoroughfare. Look for somewhere light, out in the open. And look for somewhere, if possible, that's got a CCTV camera. Nobody will want to steal your bike if it's covered by a camera. If you're using your bike on a regular basis, always park your bike or try to park your bike in a different location each day. If you can park it in the firm's underground car park, great. If you park it in a dark alley, then the criminals will get wind of this. They will know where it is and they will know how to take it. When you're using your bike on a regular basis, criminals, if they want your bike, will resort to techniques of following you home to try and identify where the bike is kept on night time. Certain bikes are far more desirable than others, of course. But if you think that your bike may well be at risk, then what the best advice we can give you is to take different routes home each day. Keep an eye on their mirrors. Has that car been following you for some considerable time? If it has, try a couple of turns down a back alley. Try a different route. See if that car is still behind you. If you live in a cul-de-sac, has any strange cars come into the cul-de-sac? Keep an order of the numbers. When parking your bike, try and find a car park that's motorcycle friendly. By that I mean, they'll tend to have motorcycle security posts where you can fasten your bike too. Not all car parks have this, but some of them will have some kind of object that you can chain it to. A fence surrounding the car park is an ideal one. Make sure when you chain your bike to the fence, you don't lie the chain on the ground. It should be hovering off the ground, and that then gives people much more harder chance to take off by hitting it with a hammer, with a still saw, or with board croppers, because they can't use the floor as a lever. You need to be equally wary when buying or selling a bike. So is it your bike? Oh, yeah, it's mine, yeah. Yeah. Have you got the logbook? Uh, not on me, but I can post it out here. It's first and foremost to get hold of the logbook. Oh, yeah, yeah, no problem. That's the, the vehicle's identity, and all the details that's on the logbook are recorded with the Driver and Vehicle Licensing Agency. Recently, the DVLA brought out a new database which enables you to voluntarily register your off-road competition-type motorcycle. So there will be a record of that vehicle. So how much you want for it? Well, three, two. What do you take, cash? Once you've got hold of the logbook, the main thing to do then is to check that all the details on the logbook are correct with the bike. It's missing some stickers as it been down the road. I.e. it's the right model, it's the right registration number, the vehicle identification number, the VIN number, which is on the logbook, together with the engine number, which is also recorded on the logbook, they match with the bike. Most bikes have a vehicle identification number on the right-hand side of the headstock, and the engine number is on the right-hand side of the engine. If you are going to give them a test ride, which is something I would advise against, but if you choose to go down that road, make sure you get something off them. The money for the bike would be the perfect foil. You can definitely get the logbook. Oh, yeah, I'll post it out, first thing. What you don't want to do is to accept the bike that he's turned up on, because that, in turn, could be stolen. Tax no, uh, MOT's? Well, it is tax, but I haven't got it on the moment. I said, it got, got nicked a while ago. Yeah, and I just got it back out, and I haven't bothered putting it back on. The second question is what devices can you fit to prevent your bike being stolen? No single precaution offers complete protection. It's the combination of what you fit to your bike and what you fix your bike to. Most motorcycle thefts take place from the owner's home. On the outside of the garage door, we've got one central lock which links into this part here. From that lock is two bars that go up. And there's a pin there, and they actually go into a locking part there. There's a metal plate that actually protects the pin, but unfortunately, this bit across the top is wood. So a screwdriver or a chisel will be able to come in from the outside, 
and hit the angle piece on here because it comes from the door up over at 45 degrees. If you've got uh, a door leading from your garage into your own home, you can actually secure the garage door from the inside by putting padlocks at the bottom of the door and again perhaps at the sides or the top. But to make sure it never gets off the ground, you need to fix your bike with something physical. The first thing to consider doing is actually putting a ground anchor onto the floor. We do it by drilling the floor out and putting roll bolts actually into the floor. How do you put your bike into the ground anchor? Some people would actually secure it by locking the back wheel into the ground anchor. The back wheel is something that can actually be removed on the bike. So we would always recommend that you actually secure the frame. And the swing arm on the frame, which is down here, has actually got a hole through it on this bike. So what we would do is actually secure the, the big lock and chain that we've got here. That would go through the hole in the swing arm, through the ground anchor on the floor, and then that would secure the frame of the bike. The actual padlock part of the lock needs to be something like this. It's shrouded. You can't actually see the bolt on it. Something else that you might like to consider is a disc lock. So the disc lock would actually go onto the front brake disc. It's nice and bright as well, colour-wise, so you can't forget that you've actually got it on and right, try and ride away with it on. Manufacturers are starting to actually fit security systems to, to new modern bikes now. Uh, this particular bike that we've got here has got its own HISS system, which is a Honda ignition security system. The vehicle will not start without the key. That key's got a chip built into it. Smart water is, uh, is a unique liquid that's actually painted onto the bike in different places and it's got its own uh, identifying features within that liquid. If you haven't bought a brand new bike that's got this fitted as standard, that doesn't stop you going away and getting things fitted of your own accord. One of the things that you can look at it doing is getting a decent alarm and immobiliser system. This particular product has got an etching system with it whereby you actually put a stencil on each different panel of the bike. It also has transponders with it so it identifies the frame, the wheels and then you've got the identifying features visible to the naked eye uh, with, the, with the numbers that are actually etched on the panels itself. With such a range of devices available, how do you choose? Look for the Thatcham or Sold Secure logos. Most insurers will give a discount when approved devices are fitted. Curious to know how at risk your particular model of bike or scooter is and what security measures to take? Visit this website set up by the Home Office and have a look at the Bike Theft Index. Security can be quite an investment. But what's your bike, even your helmet, worth? And what price? Peace of mind.